Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your creator, Sarah Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our returning guest, Adam Barnhart. We're here to break down knock issue one and everything in between. And let's pull that bow back and let's get to the action. Adam, you are coming back um, mm -hmm. from a successful campaign with Macab Mel. Give us a little bit about not only, you know, a, a little recap of who you are, but how that campaign went for you as well. Um, I'm glad you called it successful because I think you're you're the only one <laughs> to do so. We uh, we were one of the many ones uh, that weren't funded in the in the month of October, November. Oh, my um, apologies. No, no, it's fine. You know, salt in the wound. My wounds already cauterized, so it's all good. But uh, no, Kickstarter's a whole new monster, man. Um, and and we knew that going into it. We we had set a campaign goal a little bit lower um than we probably should have just because we knew it was difficult and um yeah we'll see that's why uh we kind of uh how do you want to say it built or, or tweaked our our distribution plan so so we're testing it out with knock number one now mm -hmm. which is uh pre-orders just straight through us it's kind of uh, what the the team at bad idea does um and, and you just go straight to Straight to the source, straight to the publisher. You're you're buying the comic straight through us, or stores that buy straight through us. Um, so that's what we're doing now. We are bringing the story still to life. We love, love, love that story. Rollins and I love that story. Um, so we're bringing it to life. We're we're going to be launching pre-orders for that in April. Okay. I think uh, March or April. So we're still going to uh, bring that story to life, and and everyone will still be able to read it. It's pretty integral to the. Uh, overall fabric of, of mm -hmm. the ride verse so so we need to get that to your eyeballs and actually i am uh i'm doing the lettering on that i'm, I'm working really? on lettering and uh i'm working it on that and uh, it's turning out better than i expected so mm -hmm. it's something. and sorry my coffee must not have been strong enough i got iced coffee maybe that was the no, problem no um, when i was doing my research earlier but i remember seeing the interiors and just being blown away by just how gorgeous and like out of this world they were thank you thank you roll it so yeah man rolls and i've wanted to work together forever he's done a, a bunch of stuff for me he's done um a short story for me um and the moon spawn number zero we did um lat, what is it yeah last year 22 um that that one was successful um on kickstarter rolls did that it, he's there's there's a bit of surrealism to it um uh, but I, he there's fewer artists in the world that can do just messed up shit more than mm -hmm. Rollins. like possession <laughs> stuff if you look on his instagram he he knows how to do lovecraftian type body horror and like the tentacles that come in out of the mouth and like the in the example last of us you know the mushrooms coming out of people's eye sockets and oh, yeah. mouths and stuff Roland's uh, he kills it man. He, he kills it and we've always wanted to work on something and we get very demonic and body horror-ish and, and macabre mill and and yeah he decided to he he liked the story enough to come on board and i'm thankful for it man because uh what he's doing is is incredible on that so what's your thoughts on the last of us i'm sure you've seen the first episode right oh i loved it so my I, so i've so never much. played the video game really? I, i'm not that big of a gamer um I, I play video games every now and then mm -hmm. um uh i'm pretty i'm getting i'm good good at fall guys so if anyone wants to play <laughs> some fall guys still hit me up on twitter uh that but, game could be uh, really aggravating though oh my god oh, i hate when people like grab you and throw you off yeah. <laughs> that's a mess that's a mess and it's very frustrating no the last of us was great man we uh uh we watched it uh my wife and i and we we both enjoyed it i think um i loved it no it's it's awesome i don't have anything to compare it to like i said i i haven't played the game as i understand it's fairly video game accurate um it's accurate yeah. to the story they told there i saw on tiktok a, a side by side scene where they did like the video game cutscenes plus the the um showing it matched up pretty well but even even you know not factoring the game into the mix i mean um i thought it was incredible man i i mean pedro pascal you can't yeah you can't go wrong and then uh Ms. Ramsey, she was she was my favorite. They were my favorite actor on uh, on Game of Thrones. You mm -hmm. know, Leanna Mormont was a little badass. So uh, no, both of those actors have uh, killed it. One episode, um, 
you know, Gabriel Luna is a superstar too. I loved him as Robbie Reyes and an agents of shield, you know, so I can't wait to see uh, some more Tommy. We, we only got a little, little teeny glimpse of him at the beginning, but no, man, I love the last of us. It mm -hmm. was, it was really good. I can't wait to, uh, if that, if that's how they open the show is just ripping out your heart and oh, man. stomping all over it. The next <laughs> seven weeks are probably going to be hell. I've played it on the PS3, PS4 and PS5. And um, I, I'm really happy because uh, I wanted to hear feedback from someone who hasn't played the game because I was worried maybe I was like starstruck because I enjoyed the first game a lot. So like seeing it come to life on TV and, you know, season premiere, I was like, I, you know, so to hear that, you know, it still hit those marks for someone who hasn't played. It's awesome. And you you better get ready just to take your heart and like maybe put it in the freezer know, somewhere yeah. safe because like <laughs> if it's anything like the game, like whew, it is going to be horrendous um yeah. man so let's get back to topic though uh we're here to talk about knock issue one mm -hmm. i had the uh opportunity to read this thank you so much and i loved it i mean our protagonist john is um i mean i i don't know how much i want to say without spoiling it i just i love his personality i love his perception um this isn't like your regular run-of-the-mill you know superhero right 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 no and that's I love superhero stories. You know, I, I will defend indie superhero stories until the day I die, man. You know, you always hear publishers say they're not interested in the, the capes and tights and stuff. But, I mean, superheroes are what made comics um, mainstream. You know, superheroes mm -hmm. are what make sequential storytelling great, I think. Um, so the key is to take the superhero stories you know and love and put just enough of a fresh take on it that that people will want to buy it you know and d differentiate it from the rest of the capes and tights on the shelves so that's kind of my thought process with any story i want to tackle you know whether it be shit show whether it be macabre mel whether it be keepers of the cosmos whether it be knock and um yeah knock man he he is one grouchy guy he's <laughs> kind of fed up with life uh you know, it exists. He he lives in a world where um, where a lot of people have superpowers, man, and a lot of people can do all sorts of dope stuff. You know, people can fly, people can run at the speed of light, people can shoot lasers out of their eyes, people can control the weather. You know, people can uh, make it snow in this certain area of town, so there's a snow day. You know, uh, <laughs> and John. All John got was a bow and, and quiver full of arrows, man. That's that's all John got. You know, that's what he thinks, at least. You know, he doesn't really take into account he was raised by Artemis, who just so happens to be a member of the Greek god Pantheon, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's kind of John's thing, you know. He's not too thankful for what he has or what he received. Uh, he, he always wants more, and he thinks he deserves more, and it's – kind of mirrors the story of icarus a little bit we'll, okay. we'll see kind of see just how far to the sun john knock it gets with this thing as we see uh uh it's no secret you know it's kind of in the well it is in the solicitation there is a uh, serial killer the bag face killer that's ravaging cross city mm -hmm. um the bag face killer doesn't have superpowers so john knock superhero team's not really concerned with him because they're trying to save the world they're trying to save you know uh from the, the bad guys with powers so they're the serial killer's been allowed to kind of flourish um and knock says you know what screw it the team doesn't want to take care of it i'll take care of it and uh yeah john's john's only got a bow and some arrows so we'll see how he can manage to to track down the the big face killer if he does and uh yeah it, there's kind of some black comedy dark comedy uh tied into it mm -hmm. uh, but yeah we'll just see man knock uh i'm not sure knock really knows what he wants you know you ever have that feeling you want something and yeah then you get it and then it's like meh you know it's like <laughs> uh, maybe i didn't want it you know it, it loses that so, like think of a video game you know growing up you know i'm like oh man i really want halo reach and then you get halo reach and then it's like mm, it's kind of lost its sex appeal you know man um, i loved halo reach <laughs> i loved halo reach too so halo reach was a very bad that's halo reach is probably a halo reach. but uh yeah no i get what you mean though i get what you mean um, so yeah. this is one of four issues mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, what um, was mentioned on the preview page is Green Arrow meets uh, Daredevil in a dark 
uh, Neo Norteo. Can uh, you give us a little bit of like kind of what to expect, you know, with those influences? I know we kind of broke down, you know, John and, you know, his vibe, but like what what takeaway can the reader expect from this? Uh, if you like sad broody boys, you know, that John Knock is, is your guy. It's, uh, yeah. I love Frank Miller's work is some of my favorite work, you know, especially on, on Daredevil. Of course, everyone goes to born again. I, I love born again. Um, just the, the narrative structure and, um, uh, and just how I, I, I dislike using the words dark and gritty to describe stuff, but that's exactly what, mm -hmm. what knock is. It's just, it's not, it, it doesn't straddle the line of, you know, being edgy or, or edgy just for edgy sake. It's, it's not like that. It's just, uh, claustrophobic, I, I guess is, is one of the words. It's just, um, yeah, claustrophobic is a, a pretty good explanation of the, or the description of the story at hand, but, uh, yeah, I just like uh, when all the odds are stacked against you, you either um, rise to the occasion or you don't, you know, and, and that's the type of story angles I love telling. I told it in Shit Show. I think, I mean, that's pretty much any story uh, on, on the face of the planet, right? You either mm -hmm. succeed or you fail. And uh, Nock is almost meta in a sense that uh, he's very aware of how much he wants to succeed in life no that is awesome i think right now would be a perfect segue let's go ahead and head over to the knock preview page this is on uh the lunchroom riot uh site as well um so you said uh you kind of wanted to you know go outside of crowdfunding and just do pre-orders off the website this time around uh is that kind of your first time doing something of this nature yeah this is the first time we're, we're doing it um you know there there's some uh some publishers have done in the past, like I said, bad idea. I know I'm comparing David to Goliath. Um, you know, Marcus with Dauntless Stories, they they do it over at Dauntless a little bit, uh, where it's just skipping the middleman, you know, um, and doing pre-orders directly through the website. So no matter what, I mean, we don't have a campaign fund we need to reach. We're going to mm -hmm. print however many issues we need to print um just so you will get this no matter what and come march 15th uh not only will you have a physical one we're going to release it across digital platforms as well on, on that new comic book day um so yeah we're, we're testing it out man it's uh we don't have to go we we're not dealing with a third-party publisher you know mm -hmm. um we are the publishers so we can uh determine what we want to do and what stories we want to do and and all that good stuff so uh so far so good uh you know we're getting on board with some stores we have a store exclusive um and, and we have eight nine covers i think and they're all available for pre-order um now so yeah it's it's going good i mean it, it hasn't made any of us millionaires um <laughs> but it's made us enough to go get a, a cheesy roll-up from Taco yeah. with a baja blast so oh. uh, that's probably what i'll end up doing Hey, and uh, it's nice having that creative control, right? It's nice having yeah. it in your hands. Um, and I, I think that's a big part um, of this experience as well. So, I mean, some gorgeous interiors here. Can you give us a little bit about the creative team that's involved? Right, right, right. Uh, Nick Santos, man. Nicholas has worked with me on, on quite a few things. He did another one of the short stories in Moonspawn. And we had actually, before that Moonspawn story, um, we had done the first six pages of, of knock and started pitching it around because um, both of us, man, we're like this, this, if any story I ever told <laughs> deserved to get picked up, I, I would uh, bet my life savings. It was, it was this four issue mini series of knock. And um, I just got nose straight across the board. Someone uh, that I flat out, <laughs> flat out got a response. Um, from one publisher that that said uh uh no this looks great we just don't do superhero stories so if you have a story if this creative team wants to do a different story in a different genre uh yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do something with you but i'm like well we have the story ready to go you know why yeah. don't, why don't we just do <laughs> this story right here regardless of the genre so yeah nose across the board uh, and we're like damn it you know what we need to tell this story so mm -hmm. uh we nick is uh is a great artist to work with um he he's already hard at work at number two mostly done with number two um 
and he's great. I'm, we already have the next project lined up after this, which will be through a publisher, um, a, a sequel, direct sequel to Shitshow Volume One. Um, so, so we're gonna work on that straight after this, and then uh, Viviana Di Chiara um, did the colors. I've worked with her on Keepers of the Cosmos, mm -hmm. coming soon from Scout Comics. I think that's in May, so it'll be in previews here next month, I believe um and she does she does great work incredible she's super versatile uh you know you look at the keepers pages and this and uh you can see just how how much of a range she has and then uh neil neil marman has uh sorry neil i think i butchered your last name neil uh did letters he he has a couple of books up he's a writer letterer both um and he did the letters here um, so that's the creative team chuck pinot uh if you guys know chuck from the indie scene he uh came through with the edits too mm -hmm. so everybody loves chuck so real quick you know I, I i loved this introduction right here you know how we're talking you know laser flight you know energy manipulation invincibility and then he's like then there's just me uh <laughs> so like right here we kind of see him a little resentful you know real superhero shit huh um you know uh gifted nothing but a bent stick taut string and a quiver full of arrows so like right off the rip you're kind of introduced to I, I i don't know how maybe a little bit of jealousy maybe you know mixed with resentment but like you know seeing this team and how diverse they are and then you have just john like i love how like they all have these super crazy powers um and i'm also curious are we going to see maybe more uh touches of like gods or you know um those from like different mythologies you know we had uh artemis um and then vulcan mm -hmm. is uh you know straight from uh, olympos so um are we gonna see more of that too yeah absolutely so i uh i am a faithful student of the mike mignola school of storytelling and i love how mike takes um those myths and, and the pieces of mythology that have been told for centuries and centuries and centuries and puts a, a fresh touch on it mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're doing here uh you know macabre mill introduces the devil and plays off of dante's inferno a little bit um i'm trying to remember what stories have been released and what stories i'm working on so so i don't spoil <laughs> but yeah you know uh the greek pantheon uh shit show 2 deals with <laughs> egyptian gods you know ra and uh seth are the um are the the antagonist of Shitshow Volume Two? Mm -hmm. um, the goddess Isis is in it. Osiris is in it for a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's there's going to be all sorts of uh, of god introductions, I guess you could say, as we go on in. Eventually, twenty years down the road, when we do get to the verse right verse event that is rooted solely in mythology and i and i can't wait to, to that's get on gonna there. be awesome you know, it's uh it's mythology and titans and, and all sorts of stuff and, and that's gonna be i'm super excited i had so much fun writing that and i can't wait till we actually get to the drawing board on that one mm -hmm. and i love right here too you know we we have not kind of narrating during this fight and uh, you kind of see, you know, the the resentment, uh, the jealousy, whatever mixture you want to call that. But you also see that uh, they really hold him back. They put him on the bench, you know, shoot only when uh, Volcan tells him to shoot. So you kind of get this idea that the, they really don't even utilize him. And it, it really puts you I, in this mindset of, of John. And I, I just loved how you went about that introduction uh, within you. the start of this. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And yeah, that's the thing. I mean, thinking from a practical standpoint you know if you and i were on the team and we both had superpowers and, and we were battling a guy that you know was fueled by nuclear energy you know mm -hmm. what's i mean we we can't have we can't have john knock you know on the street fighting with us you know it's not like he's a master master of martial arts or he doesn't know magic he, he doesn't know any of this so why not just kind of keep him on the perch as essentially backup you know and it's gotten to the point where john knock no longer wants to be back up he uh he wants to you know he wants to be in the the headlines he, yeah. he wants to have a headline where it's not a, an obituary <laughs> or, or something you know i really loved this uh in particular right here we have this scene of him and then it's like just the the perfect flashback between you know the older john and then the younger john when he's first learning Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Nick executed that flawlessly. It's always a challenge, you know, because as writers, we have stuff in our mind mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but I can't draw for shit. So I put <laughs> <laughs> all my trust in, into the artists. And uh, when Nick sent me the layouts, I, I was so excited about that one particular sequence because I'm like, it's got to be exactly that. You know, if you're watching a, a TV thing, it's kind of like the the fade in and out yeah. between the ages and stuff. And, and in this case, it, it's a page turn. And uh, Nick just absolutely killed um, the page turn. So that's all him. Uh, once again, for everyone that is watching, uh, this is just the preview. We're going to actually be getting to the storefront in just a few seconds, but be sure to check out that preview. And at the bottom, you can sign up for exclusive updates um, about all the, the comics that are coming out. So uh, real quick, I wanted to touch base too. You said, uh, so this is in the right verse? It is, yes, it is very much in the right verse. You will see how and why um, by the end of all four issues. Um, it does um, have a little, uh, yeah. If, if you guys read Shit Show, um, you know, you'll see a thing uh i'm not sure if it's in the preview or not but early on um a certain rich mccoy even makes a a slight cameo um the legend himself so uh yeah it's very much in in the ride verse that's so cool so right here is the storefront guys uh pre-orders are live and then uh when is the final cutoff do you guys have one we are stopping at the last day of january so a week and a half uh from now about yeah almost two weeks out, I guess, uh, two weeks from yesterday. So uh, January 31st, we're going to uh, pull the plug and send it to print. And uh, we'll, we'll print whatever we have orders for, plus a little extra. And then it'll go uh, physical copies and stuff will be available starting in, in March. And these are some gorgeous covers as well. I love right here, you know, we have uh, uh, the bag man on, on uh, the uh, yeah. the cover right here, all bloodied up and gory looking. Yeah, Stefan, that's from uh, Stefano Cardicelli. He's done, I think, a cover for every single project I've done. Um, mm-hmm. he, he's he's a, he's a rising superstar. I think he has, uh, he's doing something with Mad Cave this year where he wrote in, um, drew something. Um, he, he's he's just all around. You'll you'll see him see him everywhere. But yeah, man, so these covers <laughs> kept coming in. I'm like, man, these these are gorgeous these are all covers. And I, I absolutely love how you have like an archer going up against what I'm assuming would be like close hand to hand combat. You know, he's holding a big butcher knife. So mm-hmm. like just like how, how different the two are, uh, I mm-hmm. think is an interesting uh, situation for John to be involved in as well. Absolutely. Yeah. This dude's huge. It's just the irony, you know, mm-hmm. you, you at the end of issue one, how frustrated John Knock gets with just like the the system of the law because the john who, who's been around the block with villains and stuff it's just painfully obvious and even the professionals can't manage to track this this guy down um so that's ultimately why he decides to do it we have and- a 1 in 25 from kim jacinto you know him from uh i mean he did century with jeff lemire which is one of my favorite mini series he, I think, I'm not sure. He's not DC exclusive, I don't think, but he does a bunch of DC covers now. Mm-hmm. Um, he was uh, when I uh, when I first started writing. I I have it somewhere. I just saved it. A sticky note with five or six artists on there, uh, bucket list type artists. Uh, <laughs> Kim was one of the names on there, and we finally oh, got so together cool. to uh, to do a cover, and that's going to be a huge poster if my wife lets me hang it up probably right right in the living room there i'm sure that will complement <laughs> everything else um but yeah man I, I, kim's work is is incredible and you know i gotta say i love uh the the title you know just one word four letters uh and then you have the bullseye right in the o that's just like the chef kiss on top thank you thank you yeah it was uh i think one of the, the name was maybe the very first uh <laughs> part of the story i thought of <laughs> for some reason i was sleeping one night and the name came to me and i'm like okay that's it i I have to tell the story you know i wanted to tell the uh tell a story about a superhero with less than desirable superpowers Mm -hmm. and uh the not the name came up and i'm like okay we'll just make it an archer you know should we make it a, a goofy type thing where he's just kind of the butt of everyone's jokes um which has has been done a lot i mean archer it's not like archer hasn't been done a lot but mm-hmm. i just think it's a, a good marriage you know yeah, it's very yeah. brandable as well 
No, absolutely. So once again, everyone watching, right here is the link for you to pre-order. You have about a week left um, before those get cut off, so make sure you get in uh, while you still can. So let's go ahead and begin wrapping things up. So for, you know, you've been on the show before, for everyone that might be on the fence about pre-ordering, can you tell us the importance of, you know, pre-ordering from your actual site um, as opposed to, you know, uh, you know, backing on the campaign, like how important it is for, for the site? Yeah, I mean, how we're doing it now, you know, um, we are only going to print what, you know, and that's how kind of how it is through Diamond, you know, that's the whole purpose of pre-orders. You only print as many copies as you really need and then some, and, and that's what we're doing. You know, we don't have, we're not in Diamond yet. Um, so, you know, these these print runs are going to be microscopic compared to, to everything else. We'll print a little extras. So come March 15th, um, there might be a copy, um, mm -hmm. but ordering now um, is the only way to guarantee a copy of whatever cover. Who knows? Maybe we'll go back for a second printing. Time will tell. But uh, yeah, the, the only way to guarantee a copy of whatever cover you want is to order it, pre-order it through .comic.com by January 31st or on January 31st if you want. And then right here is that link for you guys to check out as well. So what's, you know, what's next for you? I know you're focused on knock issue one right now. Uh, you said you had uh, working on issue two as well, but any other projects up your sleeve that might be coming out in 2023? Yeah, we have a lot. Uh, so Keepers of the Cosmos, uh, that's coming out through Scout Comics. That's also a ride versus tail that got picked up. Um, Congratulations, so, man. Thank you. Thank you. Scout's doing that. Like I said, it was supposed to be solicited um, this month for an April release, but the world of comics um, moves in such mysterious ways. So it is no longer <laughs> that way. And it is now being uh, solicited next month for a May release. So all three issues of Keepers of the Cosmos 1 should be, will be released this year. Um, then after Keepers, let's, we'll kind of see where it goes. You know, we have four issues are not coming out this year. I have a story we're, we're working on uh, with a, a sorcerer that's kind of equal parts Lovecraftian and Dr. Fate and Dr. Strange. Um, but there is an aspect of horror to it. Um, I, we're working on that now. Um, so that'll probably be a summer release. Macabre Mel is the next thing after Knock, mm -hmm. I guess, that we're going to pre-order, which is in, in April. We're splitting that up into two issues so we can uh, beef up the story some, actually. Um, so number one of that will go up for uh, pre-orders in in April. So there's plenty of stuff. This year is the the uh, very much the right verse year. I, I'm expanding this uh, superhero universe we uh, introduced in Shit Show. So uh, who knows what 2024 um, holds? But uh, that is that's, so awesome. That's a basic oversight of this year, at least. It sounds like uh, the lunchroom is packed. It, it is packed, weird. man. That is so awesome. Is. So we've come to my favorite part of the show um, where I get to ask you for a little bit of advice. And, you know, last time, you know, I want to switch it up a little bit. I think it's important to maybe ta uh, touch base upon mental endurance within comics. You know, mm -hmm. when you get that no or when you, when you get publishers who aren't wanting to pick up your book, what, what advice would you have for someone, you know, who is maybe feeling down on their luck to kind of just get motivated to keep swinging at it? Uh, uh, s pitching comics is, I, I mean... It's exactly like trying to sell something. It's trying to sell your book, you know, um, only instead of selling it to one person who's going to spend five dollars on a comic, you're selling it to a publisher who's going to print thousands and thousands of copies <laughs> for, for a lot more money. Um, but the thing, I mean, the thing is, I think uh, we all need to realize, you know, is uh nobody nobody within comics gets a yes every time mm -hmm. you know you see i think uh rick remeter went viral a couple last year or something um by sharing one of his pitches that everyone on twitter loved but for some reason marvel's just didn't ever do anything with it colin bunch shares all of his uh felt pitches through uh patreon and stuff um so the the realization um that you will get a no, I think, uh, is kind of paramount, you know, um, just the, the, yeah, realization you're going to get told no. So just kind of embrace for it. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, if it's a story you believe in enough, you got to find some way to yeah. tell it. You know? And that's what we're doing with knock. Um, 
Kickstarter is, um, you know, thriving, um, probably a little too much. Uh, but then there's Crowdfunder. Um, what other one? There? Zoop. Zoop. That's the one. Um, so, I mean, there's so many ways to get it out. You know, if worst comes to worst, tell it digitally. You yeah. know, we almost did that. We're almost like, let's just share it, you know, on global comics and Amazon and, and things of that nature, um, which we're still going to do. But, uh, yeah, there's 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 ways to tell it, man, with uh, digital printing. Um, I don't think many digital printers require minimums even you know i think you know comic impressions in florida kablam there's um uh comics wellspring out of michigan i believe they are um i think their minimums are maybe 25 bucks which um equals out to maybe 90 to 100 bucks or, or something like that yeah, you that's know not bad um so there i mean there's ways to tell the story man um cons cost a whole crap ton to set up at uh but twitter's free even though yeah. everyone hates twitter and twitter might not be around by the time this airs you know uh facebook instagram uh <laughs> hey you know they got hi. those uh blog posts or whatever four thousand uh letters you could almost make your comment in in comic in a thread at this point yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that is the thing do a panel by panel man tweet your comic out panel by panel page by page you know substack substack's free uh build yourself an email newsletter but you know i think it's uh Comics is so much hard work, man. Mm -hmm. It's hard work. And, and as a writer, you're not just writing the script and then it gets made. You know, you have to project manage, you have to market, you have to promote. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you get to make stuff. And like, here's a proof of knock number one. That's just like a physical copy that I can read if you guys. Oh, it's, that's so cool. Comic from the printer. And like, here's all the covers you know like these were all ideas in my pea-sized brain at one point and now and when you opened them up i bet you were just ecstatic huh it was oh, probably absolutely. the best day ever still, i still get goosebumps just looking at them right now like uh no it's just it's incredible and it is worth it worth every uh no worth every um rejection um because we still made a damn comic book you it know? built up to this moment yeah it all all roads lead to Rome, no matter how windy and crooked and broken those roads are. Um, they they still lead to Rome, man. So. Man, there's so many sayings with Rome, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but rightfully so, right? It was a beautiful place. It wasn't built in a day. Um, it wasn't built in a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Adam, thank you for swinging by. Everyone, it is New Comic Book Day. What are you waiting for? Go to this site, pre-order it today. You only have a week. Make it worth it today. Adam, thank you so much. I always love having you come on and breaking down books and just everything in between, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. Everyone watching, have a fantastic Wednesday afternoon. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.